In past videos, we have discussed the characteristics of living things and determined that all living things are made up of one cell or many cells. In this video, we will learn what advantages and disadvantages there are to being single-celled and multi-celled. As I have said in other videos on this playlist, single-celled organisms reproduce through simple processes such as binary fission or budding. This is what gives single-celled organisms their primary advantage. They can reproduce very fast. The image here shows the reproduction rate of bacteria inside the human body. Bacteria are a very common type of single-celled organism. Some cause disease in humans, but others can be very helpful in digestion and fighting off other harmful bacteria. Under ideal conditions, bacteria can reproduce as fast as every 20 minutes. For one single bacteria, 16 new bacteria can be born in just over an hour. This makes bacteria very hard to kill off entirely, and means that the population can recover even after the majority of the individual bacteria die off. This is why doctors tell you to take antibiotics for a week or more. This ensures that no bacteria will survive and repopulate. All it takes is one. Remember from other videos that living things adapt to their environment. These mutations and adaptations occur during reproduction. Since single-celled organisms reproduce so rapidly, this means that they can adapt to many different environments much more quickly than most multi-celled organisms can. For example, bacteria have been found living in nuclear reactors, where intense radiation would kill off nearly all other organisms. Bacteria have also been found living in underwater volcanoes, where temperatures reach thousands of degrees and no other organism can survive. This is the second advantage of being single-celled. The last advantage of single-celled organisms is their size. While they are small and vulnerable to countless predators, they can carry huge population sizes. There are trillions upon trillions more single-celled organisms than humans on this planet. The Earth can carry and support many times more single-celled organisms than multi-celled organisms. Even if huge amounts of single-celled organisms die off, billions of others will live on. The first and primary advantage of multi-celled organisms is the fact that multi-celled organisms contain more than one cell, and each cell in their bodies is specialized to complete a different task. For example, humans contain muscle cells, red blood cells, bone cells, nerve cells, and about 200 other types of cells. If these cells were separated from the rest of the organism, they would quickly die because they are specialized only at a single task. For example, bone cells sacrifice many organelles essential for survival to make extra room for a dense cytoskeleton to support the body. Cells support each other and work together to fulfill the characteristics of life for the single organism they make up. Multi-celled organisms can complete many different tasks and work more efficiently because the cells in their bodies are efficient at what they do and can work simultaneously. A single-celled organism has only one cell to carry out the characteristics of life. The second major advantage of being multi-celled is a simple one. Multi-celled organisms are bigger. This means that they are harder to kill and have to worry about less predators. For example, there is a multi-celled fungus in Oregon that covers about 2,400 acres, which is nearly 1,700 football fields. The fungus is thought to be nearly 10,000 years old. Being this big is clearly an advantage because it will make it very difficult to kill this individual organism. Humans themselves have about 37 trillion cells. Even if a large portion of these cells were to die, a human can live on, which is an advantage single-celled organisms do not have. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.